Hi guys, it's Mrs. Wallace. Um, just wanted to give you a quick uh, description of that assignment that um, I mentioned in class but never really had enough time to go into. This is the assignment that is an editorial, so you are writing um, your own editorial, so it's an independent assignment, uh, not to be with a group, but the editorial is for the purpose of arguing basically. It's a persuasive piece. You're looking to um, make a case for what you think the international community should do related to the Rohingya crisis um, in Myanmar, in Bangladesh. And um, you do have some latitude with this assignment in that you can pick an actor that you're really going to make a recommendation to. It does not have to be the United Nations. So you could call on the United States. You could call on like the global community. You could call on um, the the um, military in, in Myanmar. You could call on the uh, the leader of Bangladesh. So there's a variety of ways in which you can kind of speak to a particular audience that you uh, define. But the ultimate task is to really create um, a piece where you're weighing in um, and making a case for what you think should happen, and you're providing a certain amount of background information that helps inform the problem and the way that you see it, and um, something that really connects with your particular solution. So if you're of the opinion that the Rohingya should stay in Bangladesh and you think that certain things need to be accomplished in order for them to stay in Bangladesh, perhaps working with uh, the government in Bangladesh to acquire some rights for the Rohingya, perhaps that means a great deal more economic support for Bangladesh, a variety of things that you might see. What information um, would you include in the beginning of your editorial? You might note specific things about uh, the GDP of Bangladesh. You might note specific things about what um, has already been ongoing in the past uh, year, the state of the refugee camps and, and whatnot. So this is not a task where you're creating like a report on everything that you know about the Rohingya, but it's a very focused uh, piece where you're picking and choosing what evidence you might want to use in order to support uh, your particular argument. So go into writing it, you know, knowing exactly what it is that you're going to say. Um, if you were to look in the, you know, a, a publication, so this happens to be the New York Times, this is the, you know, kind of the cover page or whatever. Um, some of the things that are here we would call feature uh, stories. You know, every publication has a great deal of bias and the New York Times uh, certainly does. But um, this is just an example of a feature story. Um, it's something that's kind of a, you know, who, what, when, where. This is information, you know, from uh, the reporters of the paper. If I wanted to find the opinion section, which is like kind of where your editorial would be as an opinion piece, um, there's a section of the um, paper that's designed at that. And something you'll notice about editorials, they tend to have titles. That way, um, somebody kind of has, you know, perspective. So today, you know, we have um, somebody who's writing uh, an editorial. Trump has overplayed his hand, may have awakened a long dormant Congress. So we kind of know from the get go what this individual's argument is. And I could find that editorial, um, you know, on the same opinions, you know, section, we're looking at other editorials, you know, related to um, what's happening with the impeachment inquiry. Um, yes, Trump is guilty, but impeachment is a mistake. And this is by David Brooks, who's a, a frequent columnist in the New York Times. And if you're interested in checking out some editorials, some things you would notice is not only are they a little bit more opinionated, um, sometimes the writing style tends to be a little bit um, less formal. It is implied that you are the author if you um, are going to, you know, kind of sign the editorial. So you do not need to use I. Every statement you make is in your voice. Um, however, if you are quoting somebody, right, you're providing evidence that was, you know, maybe um, uh, would be uh, connected to a, another source, you can um, put that evidence, you know, directly into your, um, into your text. You can use statistics, you can use um, factual information, you can use, um, you know, descriptions of things that you saw on YouTube about what the leader of Bangladesh, um, Sheikh Hasina, what she said about a particular issue in um, the refugee camps. All of those um, pieces of information can be introduced directly in your editorial. Um, according to uh, the, um, you know, the, the New York Times in uh, Nicholas Kristof's, uh, you know, editorial titled blah, 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 blah. 
you know, he said, and then you can state it um, and actually use quotes, or you can paraphrase information. You can summarize some of the factual information and you can still cite it. So, you know, by having some evidence that's cited, you know, you're doing a few things. It lends some more credibility to your argument to have some background support. Um, you're showing your reader that you're informed about this topic. And it's also, you know, a very big heads up if somebody wants to check out your source, um, if there's ever, you know, conflicts between sources, this way you're noting exactly where you got information. Sometimes, you know, how many refugees are in the um, camps in Bangladesh. You know, if you put a particular figure, somebody may challenge that and it ends up being then uh, important that you include a source. Um, so in terms of creating your, your editorial, most of this could be done in a similar format to an essay. However, if you were really putting an editorial, say, in the New York Times, it doesn't have to be as lengthy as a five paragraph essay. You might um, consider kind of organizing it in paragraphs for a persuasive piece. Um, sometimes in an editorial, you might have shorter paragraphs um, and, you know, kind of a little bit more of a um, use of language that's emphasizing the um, the the uh, persuasive. Um, some of you in class, you know, have been doing things like making um, some analogies between what's happening uh, with the Rohingya crisis and past historical events, right? Um, whatever that might be. Uh, you can certainly do that in this editorial. Your entire editorial could be that, you know, this crisis is similar to such and such, or we would have to be careful about making this crisis similar to such and such. So if you have an interest in another particular topic related to the issues of um, kind of punishing uh, a state that maybe is um, contributing a human rights abuse, um, you know, the, some of those things you might be able to incorporate into your editorial. So be a little creative about how you come up with your overall argument, what it is you want to say, and then um, think about kind of how to organize it so that your voice is clear and then you also have some supporting evidence, which could be statistics and facts, things related to the Rohingya crisis, it could also involve additional historical information um, or research that you, you have about um, the ICJ or a past ICJ case. There's a variety of different ways that you could add historical evidence. You may certainly do more research uh, for this particular editorial. Suggesting like three pages of about a one and a half spaces. Um, and there is a, a section in the handout that gives you ideas of how you could flow this. So maybe first, you know, you're gonna talk about the crisis. Another thing you might kind of do is talk about what's already being done, evaluating some of the options. And maybe there's some things, you know, from the class discussion that you maybe would, you know, go back and forth, you know, repatriating the um, Rohingya to Myanmar, you know, or not, and maybe evaluating those two options and then um, really making a case for what you think was the best course of action. Okay, so um, this kind of way of having this here gives you a sense of how you could organize it. Um, it's not definitive, you have to have four sections or anything like that, but have a little bit of a flow kind of problem solution. Um, you should have a work cited page at the end of the editorial, have four sources at least, um, and you want to put those sources in alphabetical order by author last name. Um, some of you may have used MLA in the past, and I'll put some resources up, so if that's not familiar to you, you can kind of check that out. Um, but at this point, um, there is a rubric online for you to look at at Schoology. I'm not assessing your um, MLA, how you format uh, your uh, bibliography, you know, your work cited page. I'm not looking to um, take off points for, you know, how you're formatting author, publication, title. The key thing is, you know, in your work cited page, you're telling your reader, these are works that I actually used in the writing of my editorial and um, there you can find them in the editorial and somebody who's reading your editorial might say oh i really want to find more about that quote from you know nicholas christoph and in an effort to find that i need to know where that 
you know, came from. And so they might then go to your Works Cited page and it's kind of like a cheat sheet for somebody who wants to go find that particular resource. So um, it's useful to have. And you are citing in a way twice. Your list at the end of your editorial is just a list of those sources, four, five, six, you know, sources that you used to um, inform your supporting evidence, right? These, this is, you know, the, the um, so where did you get your supporting evidence from? The uh, other place that you might cite your um, uh, information, cite your sources, sorry, is um, in the text itself of the editorial. And here's an example, according to Nicholas Kristof in the New York Times, blah, 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 and it has the date. Um, you might also just kind of put parentheses at the end of a sentence if you were um, putting something in that needed to be supported. You know, things that are not coming from your, you know, kind of knowledge um, would need to be cited. And um, that's, you know, where you ultimately will see that difference. The in-text citation is in the editorial itself and the work cited page follows the editorial. Um, and again, there is a rubric online and um, ask questions by either, whoa, <laughs> oh my, <laughs> stopping by or um, sending me an email. Okie doke. Um, hope all is well, guys. Have a good rest of the night.